There's definitely Pokemon that would be indestructible. Definitely ones you'd never be able to spark out. But even those must one day get bodied and tap to the dark choke of Father Time eventually. But what about the ones who don't tap? The ones who even Big Daddy Time can't seem to dom. The ones that are potentially immortal. So all you ghost types, you aren't even in contention here. Most is. From the looks of things, most of you lot already got got. Can't be immortal when you're already got bodied. And obviously, the legendaries just seem to have this omnipotent ability to just lay dormant for thousands of years, consuming calories at an annual rate of one per year. But they're the more obvious ones. I know Kanto Pokedex entries especially love to gaslight, to the point where if you said a 1,000 year old fox really is a light amount of gas to inhale, it is said to live a thousand years, cause well, why not? Arcanine can pull a 9 to 5 shift running 6,000 miles in a day, you might as well throw the counterpart some improvised number in its biological hardwiring and make it outlive Arcanine about a hundred generations, cause this does sound like one of those early days improv Pokedex entries should be a scientific encyclopedia for all known creatures and the best thing they've got on this thing is Old Prospector Bill says to me this here fox live nigh on 1000 years It is said to live for this long Eh, yeah, by who? Who's saying? Meowth? Your 5G fearing dad? If your man Sammy Classic Pokemon fan Oak or one of the other trees said it Alright, I'm gonna pay attention But if your man Rolf comes at me like Tell me, Ed boy, have you ever experienced the almighty nine tail beating? I'm gonna think about it twice before mentally investing in that. That voice is hard. Gonna need some legitimate sources over NPC4 in 3rd Gym Town piping up to me like Ah yes, the curse of the nine-tailed fox. I tells you, I saw him with my own peepers. But even if it's true, a thousand years may be a long time, but old age catches up to it eventually. Just has a long loading time to get there. So as we all know, Squirtle evolves into War Turtle. But what Oak doesn't seem to sell you on is the fact that when it evolves, for all we know, it increases its lifespan a hundred times over. So like, what happens here? After the second stage of evolution, does the Squirtle line just biologically check out of the intent behind evolution? Evolving into a turtle of war, it would biologically make sense to be borderline immune to old age. So you'll be prime and ready from 8000 BC bashing crabs with clubs to invade a plot of sand all the way to the Battle of Stalingrad where you immediately drop dead. But what does that mean for Blastoise? Does that mean Blastoise inherits that meaty cojones lifespan? You'd think Blastoise is hanging out for at least 20,000 years at that rate? Or does War Turtle evolve and cut its lifespan to 1%? Mother Nature piping up to you like, all right, here's a good one. Would you stay exactly the way you are now, but you live for 10,000 years? Or you live to like, I don't know, like 75, but you gain like a hundred pounds of muscle and you get two fire hoses installed into your shoulder blades. Really think about it. You'd probably be the Blastoise. Nine Tails may have a rumored lifespan of a thousand years. War Turtle might just be gaslighting Sammy Oak with a very fake ID for 10 generations of Nine Tails for a singular generation of Turtles of War. Mamoswine was frozen solid, somehow last airbendering its way into maintaining its life force and getting thawed out 10,000 years later. The other two seem more like a folk tale. Mamoswine was actually discovered frozen for 10,000 years, so it's a bit different here. If you can survive under that lower temperature for so long, surely you're just built different by the swinging hands of Big Daddy Time. Really hope the cold knocked him out at least for those 10,000 years. I, I don't know how I'd cope frozen for that amount of time. 15 years is enough as it is of just how rent free Andy's neighborhood has been living in my head. But does that really make it immortal? Probably not. I don't really think so. I feel like you'd melt them down and it'd just carry on where its original lifespan left off. You first take a look at this. I thought you'd be safe in assuming your standard sentient self-reproducing Iron Man would be immortal. How can you kill that which can replenish itself without any threat? I don't really know how old age comes into play here. Do you think he's gonna rust? He's just gonna shed that off and build up a new bit of skin. Maybe he's just had enough. Just lets himself go all brown and crusty. Cause somehow it can still die off since it has a lifespan. And when it was rediscovered, it had to come back to life. So it's not immortal. Melmetal takes it up a level and respawns as it pleases. And its generation's kind of dead and about to head out. 
It's mad that within the kayfabe Pokemon world, something has existed this long with such a high volume of them existing. So much lore, such studies surrounding them. They hang out with the freshest legendaries, hang out in the most live caves. Yeah, what have they really done? What are they going to put on their CV aside from extra in Pokemon 3 the movie? Imagine being a scientist in Johto or even Sinnoh, taking almost a decade of education to become a top scientist to specialize in the study of fridge magnets. I mean, surely they're immortal. They have to be. They've lingered around since the illiteracy era. At least they got something done intentionally or not. If these things weren't immortal enough for humans to ever catch on to the alphabet, how would you ever reap the rewards of catching all 28 forms? The unknown crawled so that you, my friend, could run. Run and be literate enough to read that report document that you have earned. You captured the alphabet piece by piece to earn this report's reward so that you could now read the alphabet piece by piece. But I don't think hieroglyphs can die off. I reckon they really do just mount walls and occasionally do laps up and down their ruins up until Arceus or Entei wax out the box office bat signal and needs them as extras. Unless the source code somehow gets wiped off and Porygon gets Scott Pilgrim to the public, it's not going anywhere. Even if they did start to get wiped out. It's as if someone's gonna code when a polyraph's foam bro fists into the virtual realm, sparking out every low poly model in sight. Those casinos need some heavy prizes to rinse you out of your lunch money. Thanks to capitalism, someone's always gonna be there with the source code to print out more. Too much of that green to be made here. The only thing that's gonna wipe out Porygon is when that solar flare hits fries all technology and if the heat from the sun didn't shut them down the mutant juiced up sun floras overturning society they'll eventually get to them bronzong was dug up at some construction site sleeping in for two thousand years what do you call this bronzong been in bed all millennium, haven't done a hard day's graph since Jesus hit puberty. Come on and spawn us some rain, you big gong. A sentient metal bell that can clock out for 2,000 years that has a strong case for immortality. Doesn't rely on any kind of respiration to survive when the vocation of your entire species is to be a weather gong. I thought Bronzong slipping under the radar was being lazy enough. They were doing light work compared to Carbink. Bronzong slept underground for 50,000 times less time than Carbink. And that's assuming the minimum of just a singular 100 million years. 2,000 years stuck in the ground could just mean Bronzong has a really long lifespan like War Turtle allegedly has. But I reckon 100 million years, lifespan or not, that's more than enough to clinically diagnose Carbink as immortal. Obviously, that's an unthinkable amount of time. But can your brain even process just how long that really is though? You could walk to to the sun 10,000 times and Carbink still sleeping through his alarm. War Turtle could spend its entire life walking that distance once and immediately die upon arrival. It could be a strong possibility that n n uh, is immortal since it's based on the biologically immortal jellyfish. I'm a little skeptical on that though since it's meant to be this parasite that specifically feeds on Pokemon in humans. So that implies knee-high Lego requires sustenance. Knee-high Lego hungry. That could mean this thing already has the genetic gift of immortality. The human consuming is just for the meme. Yeah, yeah, Buzzwole, he does that on the side. But Buzzwole at least drains for gains. My high ego is just doing it out of boredom eating. This one's a toss up on whether or not it's immortal since biologically it could be if it's similar enough to what it's partially based on. Although it seems like it's mainly the merged form that's based on that apparently. So overall, it gave you the chance, but probably gonna have to give it the yeah nah to immortality here. One of the Mons given everything else so far the biggest clapback to being the most immortal it has to be Golurk to me. It runs on a self-sustaining mysterious energy source, whereas with Ni Nihilego, it's like, gee, I guess the mystery's been solved. Been eating your flatmates, having a bit of scran on your nan. Golurk doesn't need to consume your family and pets to keep itself animated. Doesn't even look like it'll road down. I mean... 
the road's in the right places, hey, them legs looking cut, you know? As long as it doesn't break the seal, lets energy spill out all over the carpet, I don't see why Golak couldn't just keep tanking on forever. As long as he doesn't have a motive for a dot .AMV moment to take off what looks to be those power bracelets, like, Huh, these were holding back my full power. Even if something for some reason had a motive to even try and test out just how immortal it is, they can go ahead and try. If Polyraph's fists are lunchboxes, Golak servicing the entire school dinner in Industrial sized lunchboxes, even Shaggy and Scooby would struggle to fill up. Arguably one of the most immortal Pokemon, when it's apparently a perpetual motion machine. From the sounds of things here, just leave this thing to go about its business, and it could be the last one standing. From what I know, the only way you can seem to get Magina is getting it handed to you. Scan a QR code and cop a legendary via Amazon Prime drop-off point at your nearest poker center. These days, you don't have to graft to get these. How many kids nowadays do you reckon are clueless about shifting your Mac bike up five flights of dodgy stairs? These days, it just seems a little bit more artificial. But that's exactly what Magina is. An artificial Pokemon with an artificial soul made 500 years ago. From what I know, I think this thing could just keep on going. I mean, how do you run diagnostics on a soul? How can you scope that lifespan? Not like we can join the Discord server for the founder of this medieval tech. Just a life form in a metal case that just doesn't know when to quit. I don't know what this scientist did 500 years ago to play God in an era that barely invented first flush toilets. But is this thing immortal? Maybe it is. Or maybe it's about to head out of 501, none of us know. The only thing I could guess is that this thing is maybe related to that unlimited energy source inside of Goluk. Maybe they share the same light bulb and this scientist just slid on a new case. Mm.